My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on the show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. Hey, hey, everyone, welcome back. And let me ask you this. Have you ever been kind of a little bit stuck with analysis paralysis and and looking at stuff and studying stuff and not really taking the action that you wanted to? Well, today's guest, John Berg, is a multifamily investor who went through that process like many of us have and actually started studying and learning about real estate and real estate investing a number of years ago, about six years ago, and took a while to get things going until everything was lined up, but then he jumped in and took massive action, getting right into multifamily properties. So we're going to discover all about that, that journey, the learning lessons so far. So Mr. John Berg, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. All right. So tell us a little bit about the backstory and what first piqued your interest about real estate all those years ago, and then kind of how that finally came to be that you that you pulled the trigger and really jumped into it. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm married. I have three kids. My oldest is seven years old. I began that real estate journey six years ago. So you can probably imagine why my wife stays home with the kids. We were looking for something that we could do passively on the side or, or with not tons of investment and time wise. So we began looking at different things. We tried some MLM businesses, some, different things like that. And nothing really fit our schedule and our ability and what we wanted to do. And then I started thinking about real estate. I had some family growing up that used to flip houses and they weren't, you know, rich by any means, but they had plenty and, and were rather pretty generous. Well. Yeah. And so that kind of just piqued my interest, started listening to podcasts, different things like that, jumped onto bigger pockets and, you know, heard, for bearded Brandon talk about a triplex, you know, three for one. And that kind of sparked my mind, like, Hey, why not do something like that? And of course just transitioned into multifamily syndication, kept getting bigger and bigger, listening to different podcasts and mm-hmm. finally fell on Rod Cleves podcast, listened to him a ton and realized, you know, why, why not just jump into these big syndications, scale it up quickly. It just made sense. And my W2 was in healthcare. I did asset management buildings and equipment. So I was used to big buildings, large mm-hmm. numbers. So it was a rather easy transition once I got my mind right about it. Very good. So tell us a little bit about that first deal that that uh, you did. And first of all, I understand that you've got a number of partners that you're working with. You've kind of created this group. I love the name of it, the Four Amigos. Uh, so was that before or after you got this first deal on the go? That was before we actually met up towards the beginning of this year and started talking. Um, They're the first people that I really connected with in Oklahoma. They were starting out. They had been doing it for about a year. So we just doing, doing what? Multifamily? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we started chatting and we aligned in a lot of mindset and things that we were wanting to do business wise. So it just, naturally came together and then this opportunity fell into our laps and kind of solidified what we were thinking we were going to do you know come together and start a partnership yes this opportunity really fell into our laps they had a mutual connection that got them in touch with the sponsors of this asset and they were looking for boots on the ground we're local so it worked out really nicely so walk us through the deal how did it what what is it uh, what did the group, the four of you bring to the table that the sponsor needed? How many general partners in the deal? Just give us kind of the overview yeah. of how it worked. So there's about four general partner teams. We brought to the table, you know, boots on the ground and we brought some equity. And that's kind of really, they were looking for somebody that was beginning that they could really kind of mentorship, do some mentorship with and really to cover that boots on the ground activity. So it worked out really well being our first deal was something that we could do being local and didn't require tons of experience, you know, just kind of babysitting the property, mm-hmm. giving updates, things of those natures. Okay. Very cool. So four 
teams are part of the general partnership. You guys are the local experts. You're helping out, checking up on things. What do the other three teams bring to the table with this deal? So the main sponsorship team, you know, they brought tons of equity themselves. They have the experience. They started a flipping business back in 2017 and they did over 70 homes last year, I believe it was. Then they bought two apartment pom- complexes in Dallas and then this one in Oklahoma City. So they brought yes. a lot of that, you know, construction rehab experience and they are part of a group where they're getting their mentorship. So they have a lot backing them mm-hmm. experience wise in the actual multifamily space. So that's you, that's another team and the other two teams, primarily mm-hmm. capital or what did they bring to the table? Yeah, capital and one of them, their family is in some commercial stuff. So they kind of have some experience as well. Mm-hmm. And like I say, capital, yeah. Okay, very cool. All right. And then moving ahead, what are you planning on doing, John? What are you, what are you and the other three amigos going to be up to? Yeah, so our main focus is to be boots on the ground in Oklahoma. We're looking to partner with folks that are interested in the area that don't have connections. That's really going to be our wheelhouse and our best value add. Two of our partners are general contractors and the third partner, he is an accountant. So we, you know, and me being an asset management background, we have a pretty good you know, spread of backgrounds that could cover those type of activities on an asset, really kind of manage it locally and give peace of mind to a team that is out of state that is being well handled. Excellent. So, and if you could wave the realistic magic wand, John, like what, what would you like to, what would you guys like to do over the next 12 months or so? Yeah. The next 12 months, uh, be into a thousand plus units. That's really kind of the goal. And we're also looking to do, you know, maybe some fix and flip on the side to build capital mm-hmm. and keep us busy in the meantime and, and maybe, you know, diversify a little bit with, you know, the two gentlemen that are contractors. They do that for other operator and owners. They work on multifamily as well. So they're really well versed in the space already and have tons of experience. So those are two tranches that we could really knock it out of the park with and, and get a real estate investment company rolling and scale from there. Yeah. So I would imagine um, that you guys had some, you you had some pretty good learning experiences throughout this first project that that you've got up on the go. What what sticks out in your mind? What's, what were some of the surprises that came along with this deal? Well, the biggest thing is the ability to raise capital. Hmm. You know, having someone trust you enough to give you money is very different than just having acquaintances that have money. Right. Thing. <laughs> yeah, well put. Yeah, there, there is a, a bit of a gap depth. there for sure. Especially when you're just for first sure. starting out, you've got zero track record, zero proof of concept yourself. Your team yeah. has, but uh, but you guys not so much. So, were how much capital were you guys hoping to raise for that first deal? There was a couple hundred thousand that we could have potentially helped out with. And, you know, we brought a big old goose egg, you know, so it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> well, you, you brought some sweat equity to the table. At least, so yeah. So it yeah. was a very big learning curve and, and we got some great lessons out of it that will prepare us for the future. But yeah. So what what, what would you say? Because kind of raising the capital is kind of uh, our thing. Um, so mm-hmm. what would you say were the the biggest learnings that you had about trying to raise the capital for that first deal you know just touch points with people just staying in contact with them keeping them updated educating them so when the time comes they know what you're doing they know what syndication is and what it means they understand the numbers you know you can't be educating people when you're ready for them to invest yeah. when when you're doing your deal webinar it's not the time to explain what the numbers mean what what, what is a syndication why Absolutely. yeah good point i'm i'm chuckling john cuz i went through the exact same experience myself many many years ago it's yeah it it definitely sucks i'm glad that you guys are still able to participate in the deal so based on that learning experience uh, what are you doing differently for future deals? What what are you guys putting into place and how are you going about it now? You know, just building out the marketing campaign, looking at social media, how to take advantage of that, you know, using CRM, doing automations, those type of things, um, newsletters, just keeping in front of those people that are potential investors, teaching them about 
who we are, what we're doing, how it's beneficial, what it can do for them, and just being top of mind that way when we do have a deal that's ready and we want to present it to them, they're comfortable, they know what it looks like, they understand everything, and it's just a question of, does this one make sense for me? Yeah. So I would imagine some of the deals that you're looking at are 506B eligible. Would that be fair to say so that you can bring on friends and family and that sort of thing? Or are they all like 506C you have to be bringing on yeah. accredited investors? So really it's more of a 506C situation. Um, me and my partners, we have similar backgrounds. We're, you know, modest family upbringing and uh, our, our personal networks aren't necessarily where we have many high level um, investors. Worth individuals, yeah. So it's more so through the things that we've done, W2s and whatnot, that we have more accredited investor potential, like myself, through healthcare. You know, I'm, I have acquaintances that I wouldn't really necessarily be able to bring in in a 506B, but I could market to them, discuss things with them, and, you know, potentially bring them to a 506C. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So are you open to a few tips and suggestions? Absolutely. Yeah, man. Always ready to learn something new. Yeah. So at the moment, what does your investor prospect list look like? Like total number of contacts in there right now? Oh, not very many at all. Uh, a handful, honestly. Oh, okay. It, yeah. it, this is kind of in its infancy. We're, we're putting together that marketing machine now to prepare towards next year. And that's really when we want to scale that investor list and be prepared to get into deals because we're we're in a very interesting situation where we have the potential to raise capital for other teams mm -hmm. um at a regular basis and oh, oh yeah everybody's always looking for capital john yeah you're not gonna have any problem there <laughs> that's, that's so it's all, sure. it's all building that machine now so we can prepare for that and um you know just just getting our heads wrapped around how to maintain that, how, how to keep that going and how to properly educate and all those type of things to, to do that effectively. Yeah, definitely. So I would highly recommend that, yeah, you take a look through your connections from healthcare, do a data dump, get everybody that you know into a, a list, go to your partners as well. The CPA guy, he knows all of his past customers, clients, current customers, clients, get them into that list. The guys that the other guys that have been doing work for other builders and stuff like that get them to include their customers in that list right so get get everybody's contacts don't be too fussy about who they are and prejudging just yet i mean the marketing can can filter things out get them all into one place and then you're exactly right when it, you, you need to start getting the word out now educating people what i what i like to call it i like to call it edutaining people john because here's the big thing here's the big mistake i see a lot of uh, folks in your position making is that they assume that the other people are super interested in real estate and in syndications and that's a big mistake because they aren't okay <laughs> they they are not as i affectionately refer to ourselves real estate weirdos right so we've got to keep that in mind. So the material, the information that you guys are sending out needs to be a little bit educational and hopefully a little bit entertaining. Now, not, not you don't have to become slapstick or crazy or anything like that, but edutaining is telling stories around what you want to get across, right? So it's, you know, it's not saying, hey, the cap rate on this, property is blah, 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 or, or here's the definition or explanation of cap rate. It's you tell, you tell stories. And then also another big tip I had to learn the hard way is here's a big one. Keep it super simple, right? Here's, here's, you've, you've got a seven year old kid. Um, I always recommend writing at a level that an average 13 year old kid can easily understand. Not that your contacts or connections are dumb by any stretch of the imagination. We just need to dumb it down so it's very easy to understand and consume, right? Because 
we're getting so lazy these days with our attention spans that if it looks like work, if it looks hard, people don't want to do it, right? <laughs> you know, especially, especially busy professionals because they got a lot on their plates already, right? So keep it super simple, keep it edutaining, tell stories. And the other big suggestion I would have for you, John, is get the investor meetings booked now. Start immediately getting these meetings going, these these uh, conversations going. Use the deal that you guys are already involved in as a case study. Here's a project that we've currently got up and going and it's on the go. It's fully funded. Uh, we aren't raising any capital for this, but this is an example of how it works. Okay, You walk people through that now before you've got your next deal and you get them to sign off on an expression of interest, an expression of interest. This is not legally binding. They're not committed to investing, but just the fact that you get somebody to say, okay, I, John Hancock, am ready, willing, and able to invest a sum of up to $50,000 with the four amigos in a multifamily syndication if they bring one to me in the next six to 12 months. Just the fact that that person signs off on that increases the likelihood of them coming through exponentially versus what's called a soft verbal commitment. So get the marketing going now. Create Well, first things first, get that list of investor prospects put together. Your guys, their guys, you got four of you together. So between the four of you doing a data dump of all of your professional connections, there should there will be capital in there, right? Then start the marketing machine right away with this edutaining communication, right? And I recommend weekly drips. So when we're working with clients, first week of the month, newsletter, followed by a blog post, followed by a video log, followed by another blog post, right? Drip, 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 drip on your connections. Each thing with a very, very specific call to action. Hey, if you'd like to find out more, click here, book a call, book a call, book a call, book a call. Don't try and sell the deal sell the call. It's probably way more advice than you're looking for there, John, but uh, it'll, it'll definitely help you. Yeah. I love it. Love, love learning from everybody. Uh, you know, everybody knows a little a different piece of the puzzle and hearing from other people is great. I love it. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, so that's exciting stuff. Uh, logistic question for you. Mm -hmm. So you got the four amigos right now. Uh each one of you kind of has a different skill set. A couple of them sound like they're general contractor type guys. What what are you guys going to be doing to kind of divvy up responsibilities? Because I don't know if you've been part of partnerships before, John, but it, it tends to work out that one or two tend to carry the load for a lot of the rest of them. So have you got exit plans in place or have you got things anticipated if if the partnership doesn't go according to plan? Yeah, we've chatted about that. Um, and we have divvied up responsibilities, you know, like, like one of our general contractors, he's a little bit more exterior properties. The other one's a little bit more interior. Oh, perfect. Yeah. You know, they've got a little bit of their own expertise. And then, you know, the CPA, he, you know, he's, he's not a tax guy, but he can do like the bookkeeping and different things like that. Under Analytical that. kind of guy. Yeah. Nice. Get us ready for tax season. Um, you know, I'm a little bit more people operations, asset management, you know, kind of a little bit more big picture, keeping track of the business processes and and getting resources to everybody when they need them, and making sure that things are on track and stuff. So we've we've different responsibilities responsibilities pretty well and we're getting organized and and taking steps towards meeting those needs in the ways that each of us need to. That's excellent. Well, that's awesome, John. Well, congratulations on taking the learning and, and taking action and jumping into big deals right off the get-go. I wish you and, and the Four Amigos group much continued success. And if people want to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, so we're on LinkedIn and Facebook. Just search up the Four Amigos multifamily and you should be able to find our business pages. And then we also have a website, fouramigosmultifamily.com. Awesome. John, thanks for being on the show. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, everybody. See you on the next episode. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. 
And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now at MoneyPartnerFormula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit MoneyPartnerFormula.com to find out more. All right, take care and we'll see you on the next interview.